The makers of Camel Cigarettes present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. people smoke camels than any other cigarette. The reasons behind camels' great popularity are flavor and mildness. Smoke only camels for 30 days and see how rich and flavorful camels are pack after pack. See how mild they are, how well they get along with your throat week in and week out. Then you'll know why camels are America's most popular cigarette. Here, transcribed, is Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. In my business, nearly every case I get mixed up in has some kind of an interesting angle. If it isn't some woman who spotted a neighbor floating bodies in his bathtub, or a lonely husband who got lonely because he disposed of his wife with a meat axe, then it might be a case like the one I got mixed up in last week. Mr. Richard Diamond? I agreed with him, watched him close the door and walk into my office. I looked, closed my eyes, looked again. I made up my mind I wasn't having hallucinations. He couldn't have weighed more than 140, a kindly face that supported a sad sort of a smile. He was dressed well, and his actions seemed perfectly normal. But there was one little thing that bothered me. He was a good eight feet tall. You seem a little disturbed, Mr. Diamond. Oh, oh it's nothing, no, just a, just a high fever. About 110, I'd say. You've noticed something out of the ordinary? Oh, no, 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 no. I work for a carnival, Mr. Diamond. Oh? My name is Adam Rayburn. I'm billed as the thinnest man in the world. And you must come close to being the tallest. Seven feet eleven in my stocking feet. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Rayburn. What can I do for you? I wish to hire you. I charge a hundred a day in expenses. Oh, that's agreeable. A hundred in advance. That's just so I won't have to take time off from your trouble and sell some of my steel stock. Here's a hundred. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rayburn. You are now the proud owner of a pedigreed private detective. I suppose you'd like to know about my problem. Well, it's cheaper than letting me guess. There's a girl who works at the carnival. Her name is Rowena. Rowena? Professional name. You've heard of her? Oh, yeah. She's a dancer, isn't she? That's right. We've been in love for some time. Oh, she's a wonderful girl. Beautiful. All that any I watched him talk about love. her, and I swallowed a big lump in my throat. Adam Rayburn, almost eight feet tall, was reminiscing about his love with all the sincerity of a handsome Romeo. I'd seen Rowena, and I could certainly understand why the skinny guy had it bad. But being a pretty practical guy myself, Adam just didn't look like the type a girl like Rowena would go for. But I always say you never know about some things. She's in trouble, Mr. Diamond. Oh, what kind of trouble, Adam? Oh, that's why I came to you. I don't know, and, and she won't tell me. She won't let me help her. But it's obvious whatever trouble she's got in is, is more than she can handle. And you want me to find out what it is? Yes. Well, I'll do my best. Oh, thank you. It's very important to me. He told me about the carnival and where I could find Rowena. He also warned me that if Rowena found out, she would be more than mildly unhappy. He thanked me again, shook my hand, and went out of the office. I closed up, went home, and napped until six. Then I headed for the carnival. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Step right up on the inside. It is the most amazing spectacle ever to be witnessed in this hemisphere. Lung go to Gorilla Boy, captured it's in the a wild. Hi, boy. Pass. Safe, sensational ride. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Ride the high, boy. Only a dime. Fast, safe, sensational ride. Carnival, colorful, gaudy, fascinating if you're five or fifty. You get initiated when you're a kid and you never forget it. The nostalgia of hot dogs and mustard, pleasant emotions kicked up when you smell the sawdust or see a little kid buy a stick full of cotton candy. (laughs) 
And then you look up and see Rowena dancing on the small stage in front of the tent, doing just enough of her bit to entice the customers and not offend the sheriff. And suddenly you realize how fast you grew up. I purchased a ticket, making sure to flash all of the $100 retainer, and went inside. The tent filled in a hurry, the lights went down, and on came Rowena. Yeah! She did her bit, the usual routine, and got off. I waited for the tent to empty and then went back to look for the beautiful dancer. There was another small tent in the rear of the big one, and as I approached, I could hear two girls talking. Rowena, sure, I'll keep it for you. Now look, Dixie, I don't want anybody to know about it. Not anybody. He's giving you trouble, huh? Yes, he's been... What's the matter? Um. <clears throat> yes? Who is it? Uh, uh, Rowena. Yeah? You, um, want to see me? Mm-hmm. I'll be going. Oh, don't let me bust up anything. Uh, that's okay. I, I gotta be going anyway. This is Dixie Jones, Mr. Uh... Uh, Diamond. How are you, Dixie? Bushed. Well, nice meeting you, Mr. Diamond. I'll talk to you later, Rowena. Mm, cute. Mm-hmm. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Diamond? I just saw the show. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Is that why you stopped back? Oh, I thought I'd like to meet you. It's against the rules. Whose rules? The guy who runs the carny. Not your rules? Mm, sometimes. Mm, not this time. Well, I'll let you know as soon as I find out what's on your mind. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. I'm the type who likes to break rules. Well, you're a little old for the usual schoolboy and too hep for a yokel. Uh, what do you do, Mr. Diamond? Well, nothing obvious, but I make a few bucks, and occasionally I use the few bucks to buy a pretty girl a drink. Just one drink, Mr. Diamond? Score for Diamond. She was interested, and I made a mental bet with myself that she'd spotted my bankroll and not my blue eyes. She excused herself, did a quick change behind the screen in the corner of the tent. She came out dressed in mink and a black number that could have snarled up traffic on any quiet intersection. She took my arm, and we headed for the nearest pub, in this case, the Fallen Duck. A cozy little bistro that certainly seemed appropriately named. If a duck had wandered in, it would have taken a nosedive in a hurry. Man, boy, duck, or diamond, nothing could have stood for long. Mm, it's a little crowded. Oh, it's probably necessary. If all the people left at once, the walls would fall in. <laughs> Here's to, uh, to what, Mr. Diamond? Well, to you calling me Rick. I'll drink to that. Rick. Aren't, uh, aren't you a little warm? Mm-hmm. But you'll suffer a little and keep the mink on. Mm. It's a nice coat, isn't it? Mm, charming. You do all right. Diamond bracelet, the mink. I could use another drink. Oh, sure, sure. Without the water. We sat and I watched to kill a few more, and in between times, she moved. The pitch was subtle and as practiced as a lion trainer with a kitten. She worked hard, and I played along. It wasn't difficult. Rowena was quite a girl, and as far back as I can remember, I've liked girls, particularly the type you classify as quite a girl. About the time I was offering my fullest cooperation, we were interrupted. Hey, there's Rowena. Yeah, swell. Hmm, friends of yours? It's Dave Sylvester and his wife. He owns the carny. How are you, Rowena? Fine. Hello, Paula. Hello, Rowena. This is Mr. Diamond and Mr. and Mrs. Sylvester. Hi, how are you? Uh, can I buy you two a drink? Well, that would be... No, thanks, Dave. We were just leaving. Uh, come on, Rick. Well, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Mr. Diamond. Yeah. Sorry you gotta be going. Good night, Dave. Paula. Well, that answers that. Not friends. I've known Dave for a long time, way before I joined the carney. Uh, what makes you think we're not friends? Oh, just a casual observation. I got the idea when your hair stood straight up. You better take me home. And I took her home. 
Rowena didn't have much to say on the way. She was worried, and she had dropped the pitch. We got back to the carnival about 1 a.m. and walked down the deserted boardwalk toward her trailer. Up to that point, I had made up my mind about several things concerning the lovely Rowena. First, she didn't figure to be in love with Adam Rayburn. Second, if she did have troubles, she hadn't given any indication until Dave Sylvester and his wife had shown up at the fallen duck. At her trailer, she stopped at the door and turned to face me. Oh, I could see it coming. The pitch was on again. But now, she was being cautious, too. Who are you, Rick? Me? Oh, I'm uh, just a guy. I told you, just a guy who wanted to buy you a drink. Nothing else. <laughs> what else? Worried? A little. Why pick on me? Well, honey, you go on inside and take a look in the mirror. If you're a little objective about it, you'll get the idea. Rick. Yeah? Good night. Mm, well, good night. Rick. Yeah? Will I see you again? Yeah. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Oh, wait a minute, Adam. Wait a minute. Let me go. Oh, take it easy. What's the matter with you? What do you want to slug me for? Uh, why did you kiss her? Why did you kiss her? Oh, for Pete's sake. I saw you. I saw you kiss her. Well, you didn't see very well then. It was the other way around. I didn't hire you to take her out and make love to her. Oh, come on, Adam. Get hold of I don't want to hear it. Oh. What's the matter? That tent. It's on fire. I turned and looked in the direction he was pointing his skinny arm. The small tent Rowena had used for a dressing room was on fire. Fire! Fire! Some others had already noticed it, and by the time we got there, the tent was completely engulfed in the roaring flames. Every one of the troop turned out in odd stages of undress and got a bucket line going, but the tent was past saving. The fire department arrived, put out the last of it, and then one of the troop, Picking his way through the charred ruins made a grisly discovery. Hey, hey, there's a body in here. Before we continue with Richard Diamond, here are a few words about smoking enjoyment. You know, smoking is a day-in, day-out pleasure. And it takes day-in, day-out smoking to tell you how rich-tasting and how mild a cigarette is as a steady smoke. One puff won't tell you. One sniff won't tell you. Smoke only camels for 30 days, and you'll see why more people smoke camels than any other cigarette. You'll enjoy the first puff and every puff, for camels' costly tobaccos are properly aged and expertly blended. No other cigarette has Camel's rich, full flavor. A flavor you'll never tire of. And no other cigarette gives you this proof of mildness. Proof based on steady smoking. In a coast-to-coast -coast test of hundreds of people who smoked only Camel's for 30 days, noted throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking Camel's. Make your own Camel 30-day test and see for yourself why more people smoke camels than any other cigarette. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. And now back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. One thirty in the morning, standing in the middle of what was left of a gutted sideshow tent, standing with the members of the Sylvester Carnival troupe, looking down at the burned body of a girl. A case with a simple beginning, and then a fire, and a girl dying in the fire. The crowd spread out as the fire department moved in to look for a cause, and Dave Sylvester, the owner, identified the body. Ah, uh, Dixie Jones. She slept in the tent. Poor little Dixie. Oh, hello, Mr. Diamond. Hello, Mr. Sylvester. It's a terrible thing. Yeah. Mr. Diamond? I'll beat it, Adam. I'll talk to you later. No sense in letting people know we're acquainted. All right. So all of a sudden I smelled smoke. See, I thought that I was dreaming or something. Rick? Oh, hello, Ray. Isn't it awful? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, poor Dixie. Uh, Rick? No? 
Will you walk me back to my trailer? Sure. Cold? Yes. You act like you got a chill. You better take my coat. No, oh, it's, it's all right. I'll, I'll be all right. Well, uh, good night, honey. Uh, Rick. Yeah? I, I don't feel much like sleeping. Why don't you come in for a while? Well, what's the matter, dear? You act as if you're scared. Of you? <laughs> well, I don't know what it is, but you're scared of it. That's ridiculous. Good night, Rick. Psst. Mr. Diamond. Well, now, don't start swinging again, Adam. I didn't even hold her hand. I just left the fire. The fire department found out it, it wasn't an accident. What? I heard the chief say the fire was started deliberately. They called the police. Well, now the simple case with a fire and what looked like an accidental death had turned into murder. I asked Adam why anyone would want to kill Dixie, the chorus girl. But he couldn't even come up with a guess. I warned him again about keeping our relationship a secret. I went out to the corner to wait for the police. In about 20 minutes, I spotted a prowl car with a familiar figure in the front seat. Rick! What are you doing here? Well, I stayed for the late show. It's a nice fire. Just got a 211 report. Some girl in the fire. Yeah. Name was Dixie Jones. Hey, Walt, look, uh, nobody around here knows I'm a private cop. You want it kept that way? Yeah, for a while. Okay, climb on the running board. We'll drive down. We drove down to the scene of the fire, and I stayed in the car while Walt and Sylvester looked at the body of the dead chorus girl and talked to the fire chief. A couple of times, I spotted Adam standing off to one side, watching. And if he noticed me in the car, he did a good job of not showing it. Sometime later, Walt came back, and we took a drive. I told him everything up to date, how Adam had hired me to find out what was troubling his lady love, how I'd gotten the big pitch from her, her obvious dislike for the Sylvester's, and everything leading up to and after the fire. Well, that's sure not much. I know it, I know it, Walt, but there's one thing, sure. Rowena was scared stiff after the fire. Sometimes fires do that. No, it was something more, Walt. This dame lives high. Mink coats, jewelry that runs into a lot of carrots. She has a real taste for anything that smells like that green stuff. I flashed a roll when I went in to see her show. She acted like a steady date when I went back to her dressing room. Uh, Rowena doesn't make enough money at this carny to buy all those things, Walt. Well, I'm having the whole troop brought in for questioning. Maybe we'll uncover something. This client of yours... Adam Rayburn? Yeah. What does he know? Oh, apparently not much. He's so in love with that dame, he can't see anything else. What does he do? Well, he's advertised as the skinniest man in the world. He's nearly eight feet tall and weighs a good 140. He thinks Rowena's in love with him. Are you kidding? Rowena... A dame like that? Yeah. Poor guy. Walt dropped me off in my apartment and I got some sleep. The next morning, I went down to the precinct and listened through an open line as Walt interrogated the entire troupe of the Sylvester Carnival. It took all morning and most of the afternoon. Rowena answered her share of questions and her voice was shaky and cautious. Adam answered his admitting his association with me only after Walt informed him the fact was known. The last two questions were Dave and Paula Sylvester. I have no idea why anyone would want to start a fire. How about wanting to kill Dixie? I can't imagine. How about you, Mrs. Sylvester? No, Dixie was just a nice kid, slept in the tent. I don't know why anyone would want to kill her. Mr. Sylvester, how long have you known Rowena? Just since she's been with the Carney, About uh, five years, I guess. First break, first hint of a cover-up. Dave Sylvester had said he'd only known Rowena since she'd been with the carnival. I left the precinct thinking about the time I'd spent with Rowena and the fallen duck. She'd said she'd known Sylvester for a long time before she joined the carnival. I grabbed a cab and went back to the carnival grounds where I hung around until my client showed up. We found a quiet spot and talked. I know she's never said much about Dave or Paula. Oh, well, how about the girl who was killed, uh, Dixie? Well, they were friends, that's all. Why, have you found out something? How much money have you given her, Adam? Oh, no, no, wait a minute. How much? Well, not much. Well, how much does she make? Well, about 200 a week. Then who's buying those minks? Well, she is. And the jewelry? What do you mean? 
She told me she bought those things with money she'd saved. Out of 200 a week? Well, yes. And then why ask you for more? Because she needed it. I, I didn't ask her why. She, she likes nice things. We're in love, Mr. Diamond. A, a man doesn't ask... Okay, me. Adam, okay. I lost myself for the rest of the afternoon in the newspaper files, looking up past history on David Sylvester, his wife, and Rowena. There was a story about David and Paula the day they got married, and enough about Rowena to give me a pretty fair background. She'd been in show business for a long time, from parents in the business. Never done much until she joined the carnival, and then her fame spread far and wide. There were some publicity pictures that certainly showed why she had become a headliner. She'd been married once to a man named Black, who had disappeared ten years ago, a small-time agent who had left her stranded in a hotel somewhere in Ohio. And according to the article, he was wanted by the police for a forgery rap and left her holding the sack. I looked some more, but I couldn't find anything about a divorce or that Black had ever been caught. At seven o'clock, I let myself in Rowena's trailer. I sat down and waited for her. Hello, Rowena. Rick. I'm glad to see you, Rick. Oh? Well, I'm a private cop, honey. Still glad? You're a... Private cop. Yeah. I don't understand. Well, I think I do. Whatever happened to your husband, Rowena? Oh, Rick... Whatever happened to him? Name was Black. Left you stranded in Ohio with a forger wrap pinned on him. What happened to him? Well, I don't know. He, he disappeared. I, I... How do you manage to buy minks and diamond bracelets? Rick, what is all this? Why How are you... come Sylvester hired you and shoved you right to the top when you didn't even have a reputation? I don't like this, Rick. I don't think it's I any... I don't like it either. Now, tell me about Dixie. Why was she killed? I don't know. Rick, you don't think I... It's I'm... the one thing I've got to tie up. Whoever set fire to that tent, did they think it was you in there? Don't be ridiculous. Well, see how ridiculous this sounds, honey. Dave Sylvester is your missing husband. No, no. He's paying you to keep your mouth shut. Get out of here. You don't care who you pick on, do you? If you can't blackmail a guy, you work him, like Adam Rayburn. Poor guy thinks you're in love with him. Get out! Get out! How much did you get? A couple of lousy dollars? Anything for a buck, huh? If you don't get out of here, I'll have you thrown out. I want to know why Dixie was killed. And, baby, you're going to tell me. <laughs> Rick, please. Oh, it won't work, honey. Now, what was the connection? Please, please. Baby, if you know why she was killed, that makes you an accessory before the fact. I'm not very happy about you, honey, and I'd be more than willing to do my bit to see you get a few years. Rick. <laughs> now, you better tell me all about it. It'd be a lot easier. All right. Dave, Dave Sylvester is my husband. His real name is Martin Black. You're right, I, I was blackmailing him. <laughs> Somebody fired two shots through the open window and nailed her twice. I caught her, she dropped, and I lowered her to the sawdust floor. I kept my arm around her because she couldn't do much more than look up and smile a tired smile. Thanks. Thanks for the lift. Honey. It's all right. Dixie was keeping the marriage license for me, so... so Dave wouldn't find it. I, mean, I guess he did anyway. He must have killed her and set fire to the tent. I'll get a doctor. No, I, I, I gotta say something, Rick. No excuses. I, I took Adam. I took everybody. Mixed up. Was, was going to take you and... Something happened, I guess. Maybe... Maybe I thought you might be the boy on the white horse. Baby, look. I'm telling the truth, Rick. A lady wouldn't lie at a time like this. No, I guess she wouldn't. I put a pillow under her head and went out. The carnival had suddenly turned into a bad dream, a lot of noise and confusion. There was a killer loose, and I wanted to get him. Look out, Diamond! It was Adam Rayburn again, standing near a tent. David Sylvester had been waiting for me to come out. Sylvester jumped as Adam yelled and turned his gun on Adam. He caught Adam with the first one, and the big, thin guy toppled like an anemic sapling. I got my gun out, but Sylvester had disappeared in the darkness. Go get him! 
I'm all right. I circled the tent and spotted Sylvester running up the main drag. He turned and tried a quick shot. <laughs> People started running when they got the idea, and I kept low, trying to stay in the clear. The place emptied faster than a ballpark in a thunderstorm, and Sylvester was caught on the empty walk. He turned for another shot, but I beat him to it. <laughs> the slug knocked him sideways, and he staggered into a building, and I went in after him. It turned into the weirdest chase I'd ever gotten mixed up in. I found myself looking at a dozen Richard Diamonds and an equal number of Dave <laughs> Sylvester's. I was faced by a room full of mirrors, and to top it off, a recorded laugh was playing over and over. A gimmick to show the public how much fun they could have inside. Oh, some fun. <laughs> the dozen Sylvester's had all turned and taken a shot at the dozen Diamonds, and the dozen Diamonds suddenly became one less. It was a process of elimination. Sooner or later, one of us would stop hitting mirrors and get the real thing. I picked one of the Sylvesters and we both went to work. <laughs> Lousy mirrors. Yeah, you shot every diamond but the right one. Turn me over, will you? Get my face out of this stuff. Sure. I don't mind dying, but I hate to watch myself doing it. <laughs> Dick Powell will return in just a minute. Again. Doctors in all branches of medicine have been asked this question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Again, the brand name most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Baseball is getting underway, and it's interesting to note that Camels are the favorite cigarette of many baseball players. Bob Lemon, Vic Rashi, Howard Paulette, Dick Sisler are a few of the stars who choose camels for their rich flavor, cool, cool mildness. Try camels yourself. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Take the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. Here's Dick Powell with a special message. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the makers of Camels are sending gift cigarettes to our wounded and disabled servicemen. These cigarettes are forwarded to and distributed by the Military Air Transport Service, United States Air Force, which evacuates virtually all overseas wounded personnel. Gift Camels are also on the way to Veterans Hospitals, Fort Meade, South Dakota, and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. U.S. Army Station Hospital, Camp Campbell, Kentucky. U.S. Naval Hospital, Beaufort, South Carolina. Now, until next week, enjoy camels. I always do. Dick Powell can now be seen starring in RKO's Cry Danger. Tonight's adventure of Richard Diamond was written by Blake Edwards with music by Frank Worth. Our director is Helen Mack. Featured in the cast were Arthur Q. Bryan, Michael Ann Barrett, Sandra Gould, Sheldon Leonard, Paul Duboff, and Bob Bruce. Then, for pipe pleasure, get the National Joy Smoke, Prince Albert. P.A. has a rich flavor and wonderful natural fragrance. It's crimp cut for cool, smooth smoking, and specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. You'll enjoy Prince Albert, America's largest selling smoking tobacco. Listen next week for another exciting transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the FBI follows immediately. Stay tuned. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the American Broadcasting Company.